we have come to the first round of dialogue, which is about China's thinking, philosophy, and practice in ecology. Our friends from the mainland will be very familiar with them. Professor Huang Ping is currently the director of the Center for Taiwan, Hong Kong, and Macau Studies at the Chinese Academy of Social Science. Also, executive vice president of the Chinese Institute of Hong Kong and executive editor in chief of readings with um, Professor Wang Hui. He was formerly the director of the Institute of American Studies and the director of Institute of European Studies at the Chinese Academy of Social Science and Kim Chi. Oh, I, will, I will make it brief as um, Professor Liu so, uh, told me that um, I used to give a lecture on um, in my um, in, uh, social science institute, and the lectures is on the evolution of Chinese uh, social development and the theory, uh, the development the theory, and this uh, evolution. And I want to make a brief introduction um, of this lecture. And since the recent era, we have gone through a, a, a few phases and. And even though I am not, um, I'm not a determinist. And but as uh, Marx has said, we human uh, people create our own history. Even though we cannot do it um, only based on our view, but it is not about a determinist. De um, but if we see it objectively in our recent ever, ever. The social development, the Chinese social development have gone through um, a few phases. What has also already been illustrated by um, uh, my colleagues. And because these few years, um, has been a year that we celebrate the founding, the founding of a Chinese the Communist Party. And it was founded in 1920. And in July in 1920, it, it, it was the first um, meetings of um, gathering of Chinese Communist Party. And Professor Dai, among us, used this term, a very, used a very, um, like a literature type of uh, works. And in the early 19th century, Chinese society is, um, was undering a lot of um, 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 social challenges as is still in is half a colonial era, uh, no, colonial um, um, regions within China, like uh, Shanghai. And there are a lot of uh, unequal um, treaty Chinese had with other countries. like the un, um, unequal treaty that Chinese government the, or the Qing dynasty had to, was forced to sign with colonized countries. So the main thing for um, Chinese people at that time is to regain independence and the liberation of people to liberate it from even though 
even though whether um, um, at that time, whether it is the federalism as listed in the Western um, literature might not be the same as a federal fed, a federalism. Feudalism, sorry. And anti-federalism, because Chinese used to be um, based on, used to be agricultural society, most of the people are normal farmers who had a little land. So the first one is about independent and the second phase is about liberation. And since um, from the founding of Chinese Community Party to the founding of New China governed by um, Chinese Communist Party, it was from 1919 to 1949. So how um, the, the problem, the issues of land and the issues of um, farmer was the core theme during that 30 years. And a lot of the time, this social unrest has to resort to conflict and war. So at that time, sustainability or green, all these um, themes and topic was not on the surface of the society, even though in Chinese history, in Taoism, or in the Chinese traditional philosophy, how we can live in harmony with nature, how to respect nature and how to protect nature is always, has always been in our philosophy and in our culture, but in um, the first, the first 30 years of the 20th century, because of the social condition of Chinese society, sustainability was not what um, was, um, was not something that people talk about and, and the, what the government is the fo was focusing. So I used to, I was growing up in the rural area, in the countryside, in the village. And the village in such um, um, agricultural practice before 1949, the development of um, village life and agriculture is more um, like uh, self-sufficient. But after 1949, we, we were facing a Cold War ideology. And, and the Cold War, after two world war, the Western world had, has, had entered into a Cold War period. But for China, after 1949, the founding of the new China, and as it was founded, China was seen as um, the Soviet Union um, um, team um, automatically. In the Korean War, it is not Cold War, it is a real war. Until 1958, when the Cold, Cold Korean War was ended, 
But after that, Vietnam War was broke out. So it has always been a real world around um, China. So after 1949, industrialization was the goal and was the main theme internally. China wants to shift from an agricultural country, a nation to an industrial nation. But because of the war that happens in, um, in Asia, And because we can, we could no longer um, colonize other country using violence. So China had to accumulate its own capital and had to develop with its own resources and own um, strengths. So the first 30 era, if we see 1990, 1990 to 1948 is the era when China is seeking independence and liberation. And after 1949, the main theme or the main mission for Chinese government was to maintain its sovereignty and meanwhile to develop in um, industrial um in power and also to increase people's uh, literacy and to improve and development uh, develop the uh, um like the um infrastructure of society and at least to improve the medical condition of people so that we can um, at least to say to 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 at least to um to keep society in um a stable condition but unfortunately, we even had we had the ideology conflict with Soviet Union. So there's an internal conflict and also external conflict. How China had to make sure there are enough food supply for its own people because we don't have much land supply. There's a limited land to, 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 to grow food and also, and, and which, um, mm, which uh, um, and, and, on, and on the same time, the land has also to be used to grow um, cotton so that people have clothes to wear. And so we use, uh, trying to use another 20, uh, 30 years to build up its industrial um, in infrastructure. And as you know, in Chinese um, philosophy, like the union with heaven and human, and the Taoist uh, pursuit of being in harmony with nature has always been in uh, Chinese mentality and philosophy. In 1971, it was the first time Chinese government proposed um, the environmental protection. And and we have to balance in, in environment, environment protection and economic, economical growth. We have to balance these two. And we still, we, we, after we, we regain 
the sea, uh, uh, the seed in UN. We were in a meeting. We are in a UN um, environment meeting. Before the environmental protection was mentioned by UN. And, and environmental protection used to be in, um, in the department, in the department of natural science. And there, there are even um, courses and major that focus on this in Chinese university. Even though people who are learning social science or humanity, they still have to read a lot on environmental protection. And and of course, besides uh, from a standpoint of a tech tech technical um, way, there are a lot um, on environmental protection in Chinese culture and philosophy. So the third period is the recent 40 years after 1978. And in the third, in the second phase, seen from 1949 to 1977, is China's main uh, mission is to develop, is, is, to, is to be industrial life. And internally, he has to balance the um, agricultural development and industrial development to balance the urban development and rural development. But actually, after 1978, for the sake of industrialization, Um, China has to develop its uh, military power. Because of um, in nine, between the 30 years after um, the new China was founded, People was very um, frugal. They live a very simple life, so that to make room for Chinese industrialization and um, the improvement of um, people's life. That is what contribute to um, the development after 1978, which is the third phase of China, Chinese society's development and it enters into a, a fast developing phase and so then from 1978 to 21st century development was the main mission they attract a lot of um, foreign um, um, investments and a lot of the um, input and invite a lot of um, um, foreign in, um, investment and foreign um, capital to come and uh, invest. And since the 23rd century, that is when we start to mention and talk a lot about sustainability and the greening of the economic and the greening of society. So the second um, 20 years after 1978 until today was really the two, the two decades that the whole China 
a lot of a lot of part of uh, China talk a lot about population, environment, and economic. The how to balance these three um, um, dimension aspect. These three aspect: population, environment, and economics, and how we can coordinate. Um, and to readjust to a more comprehensive situation instead of to just focusing of the development rate and and the growth GDP's growth we focus on or we use the term scientific development And the more holistic development philosophy, which within which there's there lie there lies a focus on human society, a uh, human health, humans health, and that's when a notion of ecological civilization was mentioned. So the notion of ecological civilization has been very popular and very well known. Even the, the people who work for village know this notion that they can, um, they can recite blue sky, clean water, And they have to work hard to achieve some standard of the environment. So even though it's a very good, uh, it's a very good project that is very profitable, can um, um, get people out of poverty and can uh, improve its um, its economical status. But as long as it is not environmental friendly. This project won't be approved. It, 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 it has the law was in force to stop all the economic, all the pro project that are not environmental friendly. So the ecological problem, the environmental problem. If if we talk about um, environment in nineteen um, in nineteen sixties, we talk more or less about whether the animals, the um, the valuable animals, were alive. Not much about um, the the whether the air and water is clean. Before the COVID, we realized that if there's no health and all those um, numbers on in, in economic development was nonsense. We put health, the health of the earth and health of human beings, we put it as our priority. This is the one. And if we if we prioritize the health, all the progress will come. I know that because I was involved in all this project, I know what it means to be a, a real project, a uh, progress. Um, since 1995, we add to add an emphasis on cleaning the water. And 1997, we add one more emphasis on we have to 
we had to solve the problem of our the toilet in rural area. So it's not just about to change. And we, we, we started to realize the fertilizer, fertilizer, we use the chemical fertilizer we use on land. And so the improvement of, to of the toilet system that in, um, besides um, the human hygiene um, um, reason, and it's also, we are also, we also realize it could provide us with good fertilizers to replace the chemical one. And of course now, because of the co because of COVID nineteen, we we know the lessons and we know how strong and how long lasting it is, and it would it will change our mindset and change um, change the relationship between countries. And we know, and all this concept, like the, the sustainability and all this concept, if we just discuss all this um, concept, it is useless. But like uh, a pandemic comes to hit us, and all this concept proved to be um, futile, but the real um, thing is that whether we could um, practically face the problem. Thank you. Thanks to Professor Huang. And he has a lot of field study in studying ecology, environmental issues, and very experienced in the field work. Next, let's welcome Professor Wen Tiejun. He is the professor of the Department of Chinese and History at Qing. Um, he is a leading scholar on ag agrarian issues, executive dean of the Institute of Rural Reconstruction of China Southwest University, and executive Dean of the New Rural Development Research Institute, Rural Reconstruction of the Straits at Fujian Agriculture and Forestry University. Um, I'm very honored to be here today to give an introduction on the ecological civilization and rural vitalization um, about China's strategy. Um, hopefully, it could be inspirational to uh, all the participants. A lot of people saying that um, in dealing with the COVID-19, uh, China has presented a successful case. I think in this experience, a factor is neglected. That is when the pandemic break out, it's during the Lunar New Year of China, the Chinese New Year. At that time, most of the migrant workers or people, they are back to their hometown in the rural area. They were in the rural area and were living a life that's in, accordance with the nature, in harmony with the nature. I think that is the very key point and factor that why China can have a successful prevention of the great pandemic in China. Actually, the leadership of China we're very concerned that because the clinic or the public health system 
was not good in rural area that it would not be able to prevent pandemic. Um, this concern was there for the leadership. And after 18 years, we were challenged by COVID-19 again. And the concern about the rural area, about whether it could resist or it could really cope with this pandemic. People were very worried again. And there is scholar saying that, um, as the old Chinese saying, to avoid a small disturbance, you stay in a city. To avoid a big upheaval, stay in a village. And people will say, um, now you present us this old Chinese thing, but you see pandemic still broke out in counties. But let's see, in counties, the living now was very much urbanized and was much more similar to city rather than to village. Take the pandemic as an example in China. For example, in US, the urban ghetto was the most serious location. The same is in India, the same is in Brazil, The death, the population of death mostly occur in the urban impoverished population in urban setting, especially um, challenging and dangerous to those less well-off population. When the radical development is the mainstream, nature will respond with this kind of great breakout as an emergent, as emergency. When people, when we human beings are marching on in our radical development approach. Nature responds with this kind of crisis. So can we really reflect on this crisis and reflect on what we should do next? So I want to remind our dear friends that the capitalist modernization chap the cap capital surplus caused the agro and eco and the environmental crisis. All the crisis we are having now actually resulted from capital surplus. In the last 20 years, when in 1998, when China experienced the Asian financial crisis, and when in 2009, when the need from the world market comes down, China experienced with the second financial crisis. And to 2015, China experienced with the third capital surplus crisis. From 1998 to 2018, in three decades, China has experienced these three times of crisis. In, in the first crisis, we 
talk about we should be human oriented. In the second Christ, we mentioned and emphasize ecological civilization. And in the third Christ, China emphasizes on reform. All this strategy reform is the key part of the reform of China in coping with all these free crises. Currently, rural virtualization is the main strategy to encounter the global crisis. We have experience. We know that the rural reconstruction could be a strategy, could be a prescription in countering the global crisis. But we can see the Trump administration, we can see other global powers, they utilize the global, the Cold War strategies that they used before. How China can, what strategies does China apply in this case that President Xi Jinping has proposed and put forward the two mountains value theory that Green Mountain is Gold Mountain, Clean River is Silver River. So we can see that um, United States, that they issue money, that they issue immense amount of money to go to, to flow to the market, which cause Christ not only for the US market, but for the global market. This radical approach, this radical financial hegemony adopted by US is because it has no other way, no other means. So it could only switch its price to make it to share by other countries in the world. So China, more or less, facing the same situation, but China choose to use the money in rural reconstruction, rural revitalization. So three million of companies and four hundred thousand corporation were closed in the last crisis and the migrant workers who were previously employed by all these companies who closed down have to return home, return to their rural. So this phenomenon was named as the second time returning home by media. So this time, this employment 
employment rate has caused about millions of actually 40 millions of people who lost their jobs how to solve this problem that is to issue rmb into investment into rural area now if you go to the country of china you can see that many very rural villages they do have good road construction they do have good infrastructure of transportation electricity this mass scale infrastructure allows those who return home those migrant workers who return home to their rural hometown that they can have their own startup they can have the establish their business in rural area but that is due to the foundation of those infrastructure that's invested by the government so the new strategy the current strategies um, adopted by the government the main area is rural revitalization but we need to know that there are interest group the interest those interest group that they have their own investment or their industry which was found which was formed in the last century so on one hand the government wants to pull power energy money investment to the countryside but still those interest group has centuries of history that they are still focusing in urban area in the cities so still china still have its own industry mostly in the city in this case even with good policy with emphasis in ecological civilization china still cannot be the eco country that it wished for it would take another 30 years to realize the carbon neutral ideal but we need to see that we now have the strategies we have to know what we can do to put it into practice we can see that talent the young people who are willing to return to the rural area to do their project and realize rural reconstruction is very important they are the talent they are bringing new knowledge and experience to the peasants to the farmers in these 20 years of experience in exploration rural reconstruction um, we have many new models the pictures shown here the many participants here today for example dr yan xiaohui he is one of the students and practitioner in 
experimenting our model in the rural village. And the houses shown here were created and built by our Taiwan volunteers. Our rural revitalization practice has drawn the attention from the leadership. And the experience has been written into the central government papers as policy reference. We are also We also see that rural area and the urban area has to have better inclusive integration. When city people and rural people can collaborate, can co-found new projects, then it would be a win-win situation for both sides. I want to show you guys that these new farmers, these new talents, these new young people who are willing to return to the countryside to initiate all this project are the hope for future. We want to say, when we say loving home village, it is not only a slogan, but also a practical practice. We want to see how it is drawing more and more attention from not only the central government, but also from the mass, from the common people and we also want to invite the globe our partners from around the world who share the same hope the same vision to join together so thank you for south south forum for this chance thanks professor Wen. and now is uh, professor dai's turn and Professor Dai is a professor of the Center for Comparative Literature and Cultural Studies in um, Peking University. Here, welcome Professor Dai. And after Professor Huang and Professor Wen, and I was assigned to talk about dialogue. And even though I don't know where to start the dialogue, because the previous two professor is very uh, they are very experienced in um, um, social movement and one professor um, uh, huang ping um, share about the history of chinese uh, social development and Professor Wan shared about the rural reconstruction movement, rural revitalization as a national strategy. And even though I don't have this um, um, background, and I don't have a, um, a social activist, um, um, even though I'm not a social activist per se, but I am also part of um, a broader social movement. Mm. So I want to share a few, some of my reflection and thoughts and observation and even and worries with everyone. As um, um, Huang Ping, the first um, speaker said, I, which remind me of a conflict I had, conflict I had with uh, uh, Huang Ping. As he was saying, 
after Qing Dynasty and China was facing a colonial um, danger. And because at that time we are not an ethical uh, uh, nation, and I don't think we were facing um, a demise, the end of um, the Chinese. And the Huangping at that time used um, examples of American Native uh, Native American and a lot of the tribal or ethnical um, population was um, terminated. Terminated, and I remember he was very emotional and was very. Um, mm, enthusiastic when we talk about um, the danger of Chinese people or Chinese nation being um, mm, terminated by foreign occupation. But as um, a social scholar, even though China has um, gone through a hundred years of history or of social sufferings, we had no choice other than one way, one way to develop under a Western ideology, which um, We didn't have any choice but to go through all this history that are under um, oppression and under occupation. And it has become a new normal that there's only one way to be developed and to move forward and, and it's become um, so much in the way of society that we um, can't even um, deconstruct it or can't even reflect upon it. But if we are still in this path of development, we, we are kept behind with this kind of like a myth. If we are still under this myth, in this myth, we will ignore, ignore the fact that we are under this, we have to, um, I um, mean, in, in, in the last 100 years, a Chinese, China has walked out its own path, no matter whether it's a political achievement or economical achievement. And we have um, worked hard enough to prove ourselves, not under the Western ideology, and revolution has been a key, a key word, and people has been a key word. And the social mobilization is a key word to achieve all this progress instead of a, a, a one way development. Because under the occupation and oppression of imperialism, we cannot copy and repeat the imperialism and how those countries were developed. And this fact has been largely ignored or put aside or uh, forgotten. And this uh, for 
forgotten mechanism. So this is the first um, discovery and something that I want to share, an observation I want to share. And the second observation I want to share with you all is that when China now is, um, um, of course, a top five economic body in the world, China cannot avoid to interfere or to be part of a globalization and cannot avoid being part of a globalized a globalization um, process which used to be dominated by the western world and is um, no, no matter whether is whether is the structure or the process but if we want to over um, if we want to catch up with the Western world, we have to take part in continue moving forward. And if we want to be part of this uh, um, development, how can we learn from our lessons and how uh, of our experience? that we have been carried all the way with us, that we are proud of, and that we have been pursuing and, and asking and cresting for. And this process, what kind of process it is that we are reflecting and we are pursuing? And there's no um, one set of answers as it is always a process and a journey. As um, Professor uh, Sir Kim Chi was stating, um, the politics of hope is not about determinist, cannot be determined. If in the last 100 years, China has created its own path and has worked out its own path, so for today, facing such uncertainty and there's no um, forebearer or there's no forerunner and what kind of creation we can open up and in such a pandemic era. And I, I believe what it does for us is that it tells us what's the, what, where does the future line? And I, I totally agree with Professor Wan that the capitalist um, 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 countries has hugely um, shift all, all the um, cost to developing world like what we are seeing and what we are what are happening in India facing um, pandemic. And I totally agree with Professor, Professor Wan that and the church used to ring a bell for people who die for one person and now because of pandemic, they have to ring the bell for hundreds of people. And I want to really ring the bell of such an, 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 an inequality of, uh, in our society. And even some country want to wipe out some minority group. If we can't change the way forward, it will happen to everyone. No one can be upset, can be accepted from this destiny. Uh, destiny. 
this is what we talk, what we um, um, say about a share, our shared future. And talking about pandemic, I don't know who can be ex, um, um, who can be accepted from this um, um, human destiny. And like what Professor was stating, a self-sufficient um, village might have its own way to deal with pandemic in uh, um, village sites. I don't know whether it still exists and how large it could um, exist or, or, or what's the scale of this village that it could play such a role. And I don't know whether um, in China such village still exists. And what is the role of farmers? If the farmers could still be a main, um, like a, a pole, um, a, a polar in the village, and whether agriculture could still be a key um, activities in village. Of course, there are now a lot of returning to village movement, but I'm wondering whether this kind of lifestyle become like place like a, a vacation site for the middle class that has earned their living in the city. Whether a village, whether village becomes um, an alternative way to to consume, I guess it will be um, a Chinese dream or a middle or uh, middle class dream. If we if we can reflect on how um, um, such a Chinese version of Western lifestyle would be in China, if we can't reflect on this, China won't, China won't has its, um, won't has its new path forward. And as a very populated country, China, and as a South country, as a developing country, how, of course, we can't um, repeat out the old, the old path and old um, pattern. And I used to um, volunteer in a rural area. And I know in the rural region is a very um, 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 important site for all kinds of social experiments. And how could we um, take part in such a, a rural movement? Because it's not just a site for social experiment, it also provides a new alternative other than um, um, Western lifestyle and other than the traditional way of development and other than um, a, a middle-class dream. We must find or we must identify a new way to for rural um, revitalization, other than still in the same um, vein to accumul accumulate capital and accumulate property and accumulate. It's, it's a matter of containing our desire and to accept that we are part of the nature and to minimize and to reflect on um, uh, homocentric 
or um, a, 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 a anthropocentric, anthropocentric um, development pattern. How could we return to ourselves, return to human beings from um, from this um, reflection and observation? And so, I, and I want to um, offer you a turn. The first one is, as I said, we have to return to future. And the second one I want to share with you is a future is at the present because future comes in such a fast paced. And, as, and, and I also want to share with you that we have to cultivate ourselves as we cultivate the healthy soil. We want to become like the, the soil, the healthy soil that is, has this particle. And we can, um, um, when we hold it, it will become, it will, it will be um, a, a, a solid um, soil. And when it comes apart, it will be very um, healthy and um, in a small particle. Thanks to Professor Dai. Now we are into a lot of dialogue, conversation. Uh, next, let's welcome Professor Wang Hui. He is the professor of the Department of Chinese and History at Tsinghua University and director of the Tsinghua Institute for Advanced Study in Humanities and Social Science. Uh, thanks, Kim Chi. And have listened to the two speakers ahead, the three speakers ahead. It has given me inspiration for my talk. Um, I have received the invitation that I shall talk about the uh, ecological practice in China, not too academic, but about the practice because now it's already 11 p.m. I'm concerned that everyone will be too tired. Um, but I want to go into two topics. One is One is equalities of all things. One is from um, the scholar Zhang Taiyan, which integrated Taoism and put into the contemporary context. The second one is the cross system society, which is to explore the unity and oneness of different aspects of the society. But as Kim Chi advised me not to be too academic and too abstract, I want to share, especially inspired by Professor Huang Ping and Professor um, Wen. Um, but I myself is for most uh, humanities professor. But when I have the chance to do field study in grassroots, I can see hope. I am not that pessimistic when I'm in the grassroots, when I go to field study. Of course, I see darkness, but still I see possibilities of hope. Because common people, no matter how common, they have a lot of creativity in their daily life. I know that today there are participants from Latin America from around the world. I want to do some comparatives, um, comparison. Last year in the forum, I mentioned that my Zoom background is when I was in Shanxi province. It was 30 years ago. I was in the Qingling Mountain and I have lived there for a while. It was one of the poorest area in China. The area was one of the poorest region. The six counties in that region were also 
very, very poor. But I have to say, even though there are a lot of problems I could see, but after 30 years, when I visited there again, I could see the potential, I could see the energy that China transformed itself. 30 years ago, the extent of poverty was so extreme that in this little village, um, the local peasant, they could only have, because of the, the land, the soil, the, that place was not suit, suitable for agriculture. And they had no electricity, no road, no construction. Even the subsidy, the supporting um, crops sent by the government could not reach there because of no road. And because of the deforestation, the river there, uh, be, the deforestation was very serious and also the water pollution because of a paper mill, a paper plant that was opened there. And three years before I was there 30 years ago, a flood had destroyed a primary school, the dam. And when I came there, it's already three years after the flood. The primary school was not fixed. The, um, the water system was not fixed. So at that time, I had a discussion with the local government officials. After this natural disaster, who should be the person responsible to restore, to do the recovery project program? Who can be there to recover the village after the flood, after the natural disaster? Later in 30, um, so 30 years after when I revisited, I was so shocked because I could see the drastic change. Because 30 years ago, when I came to that county, I had to came, I had to come from Beijing to Xi'an to Xi'an to that county. And then because of the bad roads, there were many accident, many traffic accident. But now because of high speed railway, I could reach that county in two hours. And, and on the journey there, I could see the mountain from the deforestation. The forest cavalry has reached more, has a much better improved rate. And then I asked other scholars, other experts, when I visited uh, Bolivia, I have witnessed that when we want to build roads, want to build road construction, it would inevitably damage the environment, damage the forest. But in the Qingling area, their experience is to balance the development goal and also the environmental goal. When we talk about prosperity, we talk about the economy. 
when we talk about equality, we talk about rights of people. And when we talk about culture, we talk about spiritual culture and also material culture. So we can see that there are also two sides to balance. About 10 years ago, I was in the environmental movement. And when I was engaged with the movement, I went to Yunnan to protect. Earlier from a dam construction. The result of that movement was successful to an extent because even though the dam was built, but the water body was protected to a certain way. I have to say that 10 years ago, the water body was much more serious and severe. And the last time I visited, it was highly improved. Also, I visited Wenshan in Yunnan, which is on the border with Cambodia. I wanted to see how the local area protect the local culture. I went to a village called Ma Sa Chun. Um, they had established a model of protecting their own culture. The local villagers, when they rebuild their village, they have their own cosmology. I want to give some introduction. Um, of how they rebuild their village. Their belief is has a foundation from Confucius, Taoist, and also Buddhist, but they also have their own Aboriginal belief in heaven, soil, and people, human being. So they worship a lot of a series of Holy Spirits, a series of gods, including the mountain god, the water god, and the ancestors. They have uh, three prominent ancestors surname with three big surnames. With this worshiping, with this belief system, even though they are facing the shocks, the effect impact from globalization and urbanization and modernization, but still they could have their core, have their center. For example, their young people are all, of course going out as college students and migrant workers, but they have a way to support the young people to return to their own culture. They have a supportive system for people. But this support, I would say, is not totally traditional. It is also remodeled and innovative. For example, they also do tourism, and the tourism is not conducted or developed in the 
totally away. For example, in their tourism, they have this um, theatrical performance. The performance is not just traditional, but also incorporating modern performance styles and technologies. It is very impressive to me how they integrate the new knowledge, new experience with their tradition. Uh, another spot is called Yingling Dian. It is a place that is in high mountains. For example, in Tibet, um, with the altitude of more than 5,000 meters, the residents have a very challenging environment to reside. Even though in Yunnan, the environment, the climate is much better, but still it is not so habitable for human. With this situation, the, there is a policy to relocate villagers to a new relocation area. And all these relocated residents, they are from different backgrounds, different cultures. But when they are relocated, how could they revitalize their own culture in a different place, in a different environment. When I visited there, this um, relocation village, you can see, even though those slogans and those political callings are very prevalent, prevalent but you can see it's not only calling, it's not only propaganda it is really put into practice. For example, the first one is led by the party, led by the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party. So how is it, how is the party leadership manifested in daily life? For example, in their village tour, the local villagers that they would discuss about when we talk about we should not forget about our original vision or original um, purpose. The local villagers discuss about what is our original purpose, what is our original aim. They think that it actually comes from their tradition. First of all, it is about love, about compassion. The second is about honesty, about have faith and have belief. And third is about respect to our heritage respect to our heritage. And in this way, even though people are from different backgrounds, all these relocated residents, that they can keep their own culture and form new network. The fourth one is about self-cultivation. The fifth is going with the flow of the new ages, going with the time. And there is a point they talk about being in harmony. The last one is about in accordance with nature. Oh, the very last one is to achieve great unification. 
So even though it is a political project, it's seemingly a project led by the government, but it is put into new spirits by the local residents with their own culture and their own spirit. So they establish platform out of this consideration of original purpose. The platform, first of all, is for development. The second is for a public space to form organic new entity. It is not one plus one is two. It is a platform to foster new relationship. And as we have discussed before, that as capital, as economy has overwhelmed and overpowered other factors of society, to actually building this platform is to put our daily activity back to ethics, back to our society, and not to let economy be the only player of our... And the third aim is for of this platform is to create employ, employment. Hearing these three callings, these three slogans, when I have the reflection that when we talk about ecology, we always admire or respect the original form of the nature but i see from this visit to the village that changes are also very necessary changes with the time changes with the situation changes with the dynamic are actually vital If the government cannot make their reform an innate project and initiative by the local people, then it will not be successful. But if the government intervention could be participatory, could find a appropriate approach to let the local community, to allow the local community to be the main body in conducting this project, it would have its own life and its own vitality. Language, religion, living style as well as natural environment that are the main aspect that we cannot live without an, or, an organic society organic relationships are, how can an organic um, organization to be the main body, not to let capital, not to let economy to overwhelm and overpower the people as the main body. How to reconstruct the relationship between human being and nature, how to reconstruct the connection 
among people actually i see experience and i see hope for this questions from my visit to these local communities without their effort without their initiative without their um main body agency in this um drastic change of china i don't think those improvement could take place i do see hope and as scholars as academia i think it's my responsibility to integrate those experience into our thinking system to be the counterpart of the western thinking and ideas and that will be the path for the global south that could create diversity organic environment for the organic union of all of us so what i have talked about are the experience they might be immature but hopefully it could be in some help and be useful to all of you thanks to professor wang hui um because of the time limit because so, So these uh, four speakers, because of the limit of time, we won't open for Q and A. So would like to ask if um, Professor Dai and Huang Ping want to um, um, answer the questions. So the first one. I think it's a very important this, uh, the, the relationship between um, ecology and development is very important. And I have been, um, I've taken part in the Western part of China, like a desertification project and the greening of the decade of the desert from different different province, which used to be um, desert, a desert. And as the upgrading of technology on desertification and forestation, and currently, and I didn't even share what I did in those villages. And on one hand, this area, this western part of China, wants to um, wants to develop, and at the same time, with the um, improvement of technology, the sophistication issue has been improved and a lot of um, plantation and agriculture that are suitable for those kind of um, climate has been um, developed so it's not an either or issue I I have been taken part in all this uh, environmental in, uh, improvement project, and I have uh, witnessed that we can find a new middle way or new industry that are both environmental friendly and improve people's life and um 
receive more um, in my, uh, economical growth. So it's not a neither or or either or issue. Is we can we can achieve the both and. So and and I've also been taken part of like a, a dam, you know, the migration due to the building the um the building of a dam. And a lot of people have been migrated or have to uh, are forced to migrate because of the building of them. So this migration the huge migration projects and it's not just a population's migration if the migration also migrate this cultural route and this i would say is a successful migration instead of a forceful um, um relocation So in um, the Yunnan province, a lot of the minority group, they have to move from mountain area to um, valley area where villages um, are built and um, they can settle in villages. So whether this kind of migration and relocation could embrace or include the social relationship and also a cultural um, diversity. So what I want to say, a lot of the changes, not, not just the economical and environmental changes, and we can even improve the health the health of human of people and largely resort to because of the improvement of infrastructure. I used to walk for four days to reach a village, but because of the um, infrastructure like the high speed railway, it only took two and a half hours for me to reach certain places, which used to took me four days. Because of infrastructure, the building construction of infrastructure invested by the country and certain um, companies. But besides this infrastructure, the building of infrastructure, we would we have to pay attention to the continuity of culture and the and the flow of humans and um, um, all beings. Okay, thank you. My comment would stop here because of time limit. So would Professor Dai want to say something? Okay, Professor Dai said no. Because we have still one month to go, we will continue this dialogue. And I will wrap up. I will invite two other moderators to wrap up the... Um, so first, I will invite uh, Yan Xiaohui. So I want to briefly um, share with you that when we talk about hope and the politics of hope, because the environment is um, where um, human beings live and we really like largely relied on um, environment and nature. We hosted a meeting at the beginning of this year talking about um, a rural 
action and rural um, activism. Summarizing the, in the last two decades, all the work and all the program and all the reflection, all the practice we have in the last two decades, which means led by Professor Wan, Professor Dai, and, and Professor Liu Lao, with the, all the effort and exploration. And it has been 20 years. And we are, we are working hard on rural reconstruction. And we are now facing two sides of um, a crisis, economical and environmental. That's why we are facing with um, new um, challenges. So I hope uh, everyone in this uh, forum would um, um, follow the rural reconstruction movement in China and be part of this movement and let's create a hope together. Let's create a hope together. Thanks, uh, Xiao Hui. So I, will want, I want to invite uh, um, Jade. So and she will use English. Yeah. And tomorrow uh, we will have a book launch of uh, Professor Wen um, monograph, the first monograph, uh, 10 Crisis. The political economy of China development from 1949 to uh, 2020, and then we can continue to uh, discuss and debate about the uh, Chinese experience, particularly uh, the uh, experience of the uh, uh, land revolution. How China struggled to um, uh, maintain the uh, small peasantry and also the collective ownership of natural resources, and uh, particularly in the uh, long, uh, long years of uh, pursuing uh, industrialization and the at the current stage of financialization and uh, on the other hand uh, we also um, think that uh, it is very important to think about the uh, traditional um, uh, medicines uh, because uh, uh, in the fighting of a uh, uh, COVID pandemic, uh, not only uh, the majority of uh, Chinese pe Chinese uh, peasants has space uh, in their countryside and also have access to food. So uh, uh, apart from that, uh, we also find that the very importance to uh, reactivate the uh, Chinese uh, medicine. So uh, in on uh, 28th of June, we have a section about traditional medicine, the colonizing knowledge. Uh, we we uh, discuss about uh, Chinese experience, but also the experience from Africa, uh, Brazil, particularly Amazon area, and also Indonesia. So uh, uh, welcome to these uh, sections. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So um, very quickly, uh, I would like want to say that actually in the year 2003, uh, Professor Huang Ping and I, we co-edited the book called China Reflected. And in that, there were collections of writings by all our speakers tonight. And so if you're interested, you could refer to that book. But then I, we would, I would also be uh, discussing with uh, Professor Huang to see if we would, um, uh, well, uh, start to do um, a, 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 well, a second series um, of that uh, of the, the reflecting on China's trajectory. And I think tonight, um, uh, well, the, our speakers have posed very uh, important questions which are very fundamental. Uh, so they, and these uh, problems that uh, uh, China encountered, they were not specific to China because they are also shared by a lot of the global south uh, countries. So there's the dilemma between development and the kind of uh, consequences uh, that would be um, that have caused also uh, ecological disasters. And the alternative does not lie only in one country's efforts because we find that the alternatives have to be uh, global, but then they also have to be um, nurtured by the um, communities on the ground. And that is why uh, in this um, uh, forum, we have been trying to uh, uh, bring together practitioners from communities, uh, but also scholars uh, who would be rethinking these issues. 